All right, so what we're moving on to here is still B equals D over T. Still review of science 10, but this would have been about as far as you would have gotten in science 10. It's a one-dimensional vector type question to do B equals D over T, but it involves a question where the trip involved has more than one part to it. Okay, so I'm going to kind of walk you through this one, how we would solve it, and then I'm going to have you try one that's similar. Okay, so what we have is a garbage truck that's traveling at 4 meters per second north for 12 and a half seconds. And then it turns and travels 26 meters south at 16 meters per second. Okay, we want to know the average velocity and the average speed. Okay, so one of the things we have to understand first is that this formula, okay, actually means average velocity equals the total displacement over the total time. Okay? If I'm dealing with just one thing where there's one displacement and one time, I don't have to worry about it being an average or anything like that. But if I'm dealing with a trip like this, where I have two parts, then I need to find the total displacement over the whole trip and divide it by the total time over the whole trip to get the average velocity over the whole trip. Because obviously, in one part of this, the truck is traveling faster and in a different direction than it is in the other part. Okay? Everybody all right with that idea? Okay. So what we're looking at here is that the truck goes north, then it goes south. Okay? So I'm going to break this up when I'm writing down my givens into part one and part two. And I'm going to have a totals column as well. If I'm going to calculate the average velocity, I need to have the total displacement and the total time. For part one of this trip, they tell me the velocity in part one and they tell me the time in part one. Okay. But I don't know the displacement in part one. Can I find it? Sure I can, right? I have V and T, and I just need to find D. So I'm only missing one part of this formula. Right? So I'm simply going to manipulate this formula to solve for the displacement in the first part of the trip. So I'm going to multiply both sides by T to get D. I now know the distance, the displacement, and the time for part one. It's 50 meters north, 12 and a half seconds. I also know the velocity, but I don't really need that. Okay, not anymore anyway. All right, in part two of the trip, they tell me the displacement is 26 meters south, and they tell me that the velocity of the truck is 16 meters per second. So, okay, what do I not know for part two? Time, and I find it. Yeah, I have two out of the three parts of V equals D over T, so now I just need to solve for T. So I'm going to multiply both sides by T, okay, divide both sides by V, and I'm going to have that. So in this part here, T equals D over V. Okay, and that's going to be 26 divided by 16. That one I'm not doing in my head. Okay, so 1.625 meters per second. I'm sorry, 1.625 seconds. Okay, so obviously it's going quite a bit faster. Alright, 
can I now figure out the total displacement and the total time for this trip for this garbage truck? Okay. In part one, the truck goes 50 meters north. In part two, it goes 26 meters south. Okay. So effectively, the truck did this. That means this is my initial position and this is my final position. How far is this? 24 meters. Right? If I went 50 to the north and then came back 26, I'm still 24 meters ahead of where I started. Everybody alright with my logic there? Okay, just going 50 minus 26. Okay, so my total displacement is 24 meters north. Okay, and my total time is how much? Part one took 12 and a half seconds, part two took 1.625 seconds. How long did the whole trip take? What do I do with those two times? Yeah, just add them together, right? The whole trip was 12 and a half plus 1.625 seconds. Okay, so we're looking at like what, 14.125 seconds? Okay. Okay, now, why didn't I subtract the times? I subtracted the displacements. Why didn't I subtract the times? Because it can't go back in time. If I subtracted the times, it means I went back in time. I went backwards. I went south. I can go back in time when I went south. Okay? You're never, never going to subtract time because then you're going back in time. Okay? All right. Um, so now I've got the total displacement and the total time. Can I find the average velocity now? Yeah. yeah. This formula says I can. It says I've got D total, T total. Okay? I can find V average. So that's what I'll do. My average velocity okay, will be uh, 24 meters north divided by 14.125 seconds Oops. all right so we have uh, two significant digits here so we're looking at 1.7 meters per second How did I know it was north? Because it was positive. Uh, not only was it positive, but I had already established that I ended up 24 meters north of where I started. Right? My, my displacement is north. My velocity also has to be north. Those are always going to have the same direction because they're involving the same trip. Okay. Now, probably some of you are looking at this and going, man, he did a whole bunch of work. I know how to calculate averages. I just add all the things together and divide by the number of things I added together. Okay, right? You guys all learned that before, right? How come that doesn't work here? Because I'm going to tell you, it's going to get a way different answer. Okay, if I take this speed and uh, this speed and add them together and divide by two, I get 10 meters per second, which is quite a bit different than this. Yeah? So why wouldn't I do it that way? The answer is, when you add everything together and divide by the number of things you added, you assumed they all represented equal parts of the whole. So when I calculate like a class average on a test, you all represent an equal part of that average. This trip is not two equal parts. Okay? One part of this trip took 12 and a half seconds and was 50 meters long. The other part of the trip okay, only took 1.6 seconds. So it's much shorter. It doesn't represent nearly as big a part of the whole. If I just add those two things together, I'm saying they, they were equal to start with, and they're not. Okay? One of these things represents a much bigger part of the trip than the other does. So I have to weight it that way, and that's why we do it this way. Okay? It weights it so that the bigger parts of the trip represent a greater part of the average. 
right? It would be like saying, I drive all the way to Edmonton and I'm going 120 all the way, I get to Leduc, which is like really close, it was like really close to Edmonton, and suddenly there's some road construction and for the last 10 kilometers, I have to drive at 50. So I'm gonna do my average speed is 120 plus 50 and divide by two. I went 120 for 90% of the trip, okay? I need to make sure that 120 represents 90% of the trip and not 50, okay? Everyone kind of okay with that? Right. Okay, let's have you try this one. This one's really easy. It's not a two-part question, okay? It's just a V equals D over T question, all right? You have an average speed of 67 meters per second. How long does it take a falcon to dive to the ground along a 150 meter path? Okay, write down your givens, write down your formula, manipulate, solve. Okay, that's what I want to see here. I'll give you a minute on that one. Okay, so solving a question like this, okay, the, the steps for basically any problem in physics are write down your givens. Okay, so write down what the question gives you. Pick your formula. Manipulate your formula if you have to. Plug in your numbers and solve. Okay. So for this question here, we have an average speed, so not velocity, just speed, 67 meters per second. Okay. How long does it take? What are they asking me to find? Time. Okay. So it's a question mark. Okay. Um, along a 150 meter path. So there's my givens. On a quiz or a test, that's a mark. Now, I need to pick a formula that's going to solve for t using v and d. Do I have one? Yes. OK, so this is a v equals d over t question. Sometimes they even give you a mark for that step. Okay. I need to solve for t, so I need to manipulate. All right, so I'm going to multiply both sides by t. And then I'm going to divide both sides by v. Okay, so I end up with t equals d over v. I usually give a mark for that step too. Okay, any manipulation that you have to do. Okay, then I'm going to plug in my numbers. That'll be um, 150 divided by 67. Sometimes I give a mark for that step too. Okay, and then my final answer okay, is going to be 2.2 seconds. Your final answer is one. All right, everybody follow what I did there. All right, so these are the kind of questions you would have done in science 10, simple v equals v over t questions. All right, I'm going to have you work on a few of those, not for too long because I don't think we need to spend too much time on a formula we already know. Okay, but I know some of you had science 10 second semester and you probably didn't get as much practice on this stuff as you normally would. Okay, so. Um, have you call up the uh, Unit 1 workbook file on your phone. I'll put it up here on the board, but if you want to have it closer to you, okay, that's what's going to be up here. So it's uh, that Physics 20 Unit 1 Kinematics work Worksheet book. So we just did question number one. Okay, I'd like you guys to try, um, like, let's try two and uh, actually skip number two. Let's do number three because it's like the garbage truck question we just did. Okay, and let's try three and four. Let's say three to six for now. Okay, so let's do questions three to six. Okay, so number three works just like the garbage truck question we did earlier, okay? It's a, it's a bus this time, right? So we have a bus that travels 11 kilometers at an average velocity of 21 meters per second. Here's what's different about this question. I need to convert some units. I can't use kilometers with meters per second because they're not measuring the distance part in the same way. So I want to convert the kilometers to meters, okay? How many meters in a kilometer? A thousand. All right. So in part one, 
Okay. The total, um, the total dis, or sorry, total, yeah, distance. There's no vectors given here. Okay, is eleven thousand meters. And uh, it says velocity, but it's got to be speed because there's no directions here. Okay, is twenty-one meters per second. In part two, okay, it travels one kilometer, which is a thousand meters. Okay, at a smaller velocity of 4.2 meters per second. Okay, determine the average velocity of the bus over the entire trip. All right, so if I want to find average velocity, okay, av or sorry, av it says average velocity, but it's speed because there's no directions here. Okay, so I want to find the average speed, it's total distance divided by total time. Hey, I don't have the times for either part, but can I find them? And I already have the distances for both, so I can already calculate the total distance here because they gave me the distance for both part one and for part two. Right? So what I'm going to do is calculate the time for both parts so that I can figure out what the total time is. So t equals d over v, so that will be 11,000 divided by 21. Okay, so the first part's going to take 523.80, well, 810 seconds. Okay, and got to do the same thing here. T equals D over V, 1,000 divided by 4.2. Okay, so 238.095 seconds. Okay, so now I've got the ability to get total distance and total time. The trick on this question was you had to convert the units, okay? Um, so my total distance here is gonna be 12,000 meters, 11,000 plus 1,000. Everybody okay with that? Okay, and my total time is going to be the 523 plus the 238. Now, in physics, you want to keep all of your decimals until the very end. Okay, so even though I didn't write them all down, I kept them in the calculator. All right, so I'm going to go uh, 523.809, uh, 5238 plus, plus my answer from the last one. Okay, that'll give me... 761.905 seconds. Okay, so now I've got total distance, total time. I'm just going to plug those into the formula. So 12,000 meters divided by 761. Okay, again, I'm not going to write them all. I'm just going to use them in my calculator. Okay, so 12,000 divided by my answer. All right, so my average speed is, um, I only have two sig digs here, so my average speed is going to be 16 meters per second. Okay, everybody all right with that? Okay, now I've twice in the last two questions referred to significant digits. How many people know what that is? You all know the rules on how that works. So four. Okay. All right. Um, questions on that one? How are we doing on number four? How many people are done number four? All right. I'll give you a little bit more time because I kind of figured three sure might stump a few people, and that's okay. All right. So let's keep going on those other ones. Okay. Give you a few more minutes. We'll go through a few more. Okay. Let's have a quick look at uh, number four here. And so number four is, is uh, quite a bit simpler because it doesn't it only has one part. Okay? So the speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second if the air is 20 degrees Celsius, okay? which is why if you've ever been told that if you want to figure out how far away a, you know, lightning strikes, you divide you count the seconds and divide by three, okay, because it's approximately 343 meters per second 
Okay. Um, so if you've ever been in one of those situations where like the lightning and then the thunder were like right beside each other, it was closer than 300 meters. Okay. Really, really close. All right. Uh, so we've got that sound travels at 343 meters per second. So they're giving us V, 343 meters per second. And they want to know how long it takes, okay, for it to travel one mile. That's 1,609 meters, which is going to be our distance. Okay, so I'm going to use V equals D over T for this one. I'm going to solve for T by multiplying both sides by T and then dividing both sides by V. Okay, so T will equal D over V, 1,609 meters divided by 343 meters per second. Okay, and so we're looking at 4.69 seconds. So if you hear the lightning four and a half, or sorry, hear the thunder four and a half seconds or so after you see the lightning, it's about a mile away. Okay. Everybody all right with that? Okay, do we need to go over number five? How many people have done five? Okay, do we need to go over that one? Okay, that one. okay. and how about number six? Can you go over that one? I'm afraid to say so, guys. Didn't go over it. Okay. All right. So we got a three-toed sloth is the slowest moving land, land land mammal on the ground. The sloth moves at an average speed of 0 0.037 meters per second. That's 3.7 centimeters per second. Okay. So it's like really slow. Um, which is slower than the giant tortoise, which walks at 0 0.076 meters per second. After 12 minutes of walking, how much further? Nice spelling. Further. Would the tortoise have gone relative to the sloth? Okay, so what do I need to find out about each one of these animals first off? If I want to know how much further one of them goes, I need to know the distance. I need to know the distance each one of them walks. Okay, because if I want to find how much further one of them goes than the other, I need that, and then I'm just going to subtract the numbers. Okay, so I'll have sloth. Okay, I know the sloth has a uh, speed of. Uh, 0 0.037 meters per second, and they're both going to walk for 12 minutes. Do I want my time in minutes? No, I need it in seconds so it matches what I have here. Okay, how do I find out how many seconds are in 12 minutes? Multiply by 60. Okay, how many seconds in 12 minutes? 720 seconds. Okay, and then for the tortoise. Okay, its speed is 0 0.076 meters per second. Its time is also 720 seconds. We just need to find the distance for both. So D equals T times V. Okay, that'll be 0 0.037 times 720 for the sloth. Okay, so 26.64 meters. Okay, and for the tortoise, okay, uh, 0 0.076 times 720. Okay, so they go 54.72 meters. Now I just subtract those two numbers, and when I do that, I'm going to get that the tortoise will go 28 meters further than the sloth. Everybody okay with that? All right. Um, so that was number six, right? Okay. So seven and eight are like the garbage truck question. Okay. And I'd like you to try a couple more like that, just so that we get some experience with those. Okay, so seven's a bit easier than eight, okay? Eight's got a bit of a, a trick. You wouldn't have done one like that in science 10, okay? But it's got a little bit of a trick to it. Um, for number eight, leave the units as they are. Leave it with kilometers and hours, okay? That'll work just fine for, uh, for that question. Questions so far there? Okay, so try seven and eight, okay, we'll see how we do on that one. All right, so 
I mean, when, when a person skydives, they actually accelerate, but we're simplifying the real situation here just to make it a V equals D over T question. Nobody falls at a constant velocity, at least at first. Okay? Once you hit terminal velocity, then you fall at a constant velocity all the way to the ground, the rest of the way to the ground. Okay? But this is being simplified a bit. Okay? Uh, so a skydiver with parachute unopened, so that would be part one of this question, okay, falls 625 meters in 15 seconds. Okay. After the parachute is opened, okay, they fall 356 meters in 142 seconds. If I want to find their average velocity, then I need to have the total distance and the total, or total displacement, sorry, and the total time. Is that going to be fairly straightforward here? All they gave me was distances and times. Right, so I don't even have to do any of the intermediate calculating we had to do on the other ones we did. Okay? So my total distance, or sorry, your total displacement is going to be 625 plus 356, so 981. I shouldn't just it, but I did, okay. Yeah. 981 meters, okay, and the total time is going to be 157 seconds. Okay, so my average velocity for this will be 981 divided by 157 seconds, okay, which will give me 6.2 meters per second down. Okay, that's my average velocity for the skydiver. Obviously, they fell a lot faster than that in part one. Okay, but part two represents a much greater part of the trip than part one does in terms of time. Okay, and so that's why the average is weighted far more in favor of part two than it is in favor of part one. How are we doing on number eight? How many people have done number eight? I'm going to give you a little bit more time on number eight. Okay, here's what I want you to think about as a bit of a hint for number eight. Number eight gives you information about part one, part two, and the totals. It tells you the average velocity over the whole trip. And it tells you how long the whole trip is, or you can figure it out. Okay, with that information, could you figure out how long the whole trip is? in terms of time. Okay. You might be able to use that to help you get the information you need for part three. Okay. So this one you're kind of working backwards a little bit. Okay, so the first thing we want to do with a question like number eight is, is break it up and write down the givens for the three parts. Okay, so we know that in part one, okay, um, the car moves at 25 kilometers per hour. Okay, for 15 kilometers. Okay, in part two, okay, it moves at 62 kilometers per hour north. Okay, for 32 kilometers. Okay, and then. Um, The last part, part three, is 13 kilometers. That's all we know right now. Okay. The other thing we know is our average velocity and total displacement. We know our average velocity um, is 40 kilometers per hour north. And we know that the total length of the trip is 60 kilometers north. is for part three. If I want to find the velocity for part three, I need the time for part three, and I don't have it. Okay? But I do know the velocity, the average velocity, and the total distance for the whole trip. 
Can I find the time for the whole trip using that number? Or those numbers, sorry. Okay, so let's do that first. Okay, so T will equal D over V, so that'll be um, 60 kilometers divided by 40 kilometers per hour. This whole trip takes an hour and a half. Okay, the whole trip takes 1.5 hours. Now, I don't know the time for either of the other parts either, but I can find the time for part one and for part two, agreed? If I know the times for part one, for part two, and the whole trip, would I be able to figure out how long part three takes? Okay, that's my next step, finding all the times. Because once I have the time for part three, I can use V equals D over T. Okay, so I know the whole trip takes one and a half hours. I gotta calculate how long part one takes. So that'll be 25 divided by 15. Oops, works better when it's on. 25 divided by 15. Okay, so part one takes 1.67 hours. Okay, got to do the same thing here. Whoops, that's not right. That's not right. I did that backwards, didn't I? I did. It's supposed to be 15 over 25. That didn't make sense as soon as I wrote it down. Okay, uh, sorry. So it should be 15 over 25, which will come to a much better number than the one we just got. Okay, so 0.6 hours, better. Okay, so part one takes 0.6 hours. Okay, part two is gonna be 32 divided by 62. Okay, D over V. Okay, 0.516 hours. All right, whole trip takes one and a half hours and I know the two thirds of the trip takes, okay? this long. So all I'm going to do is figure out what this last time equals. So this time will be 1.5 minus 0.6 minus 0.516. Okay? And that'll give me the time for part three. So part three takes 0.3838 hours. Okay. Can I now use V equals D over T to figure out the velocity for part three? Okay. So, I mean, is this a lot of tedious work? It is. Would I ask you to do a question like this on a test? No. Okay. Because how many times did you do the same calculation in this question? Like three times. Right? Like I'm not, it's not an exam kind of question. It's just a question that kind of gets you thinking. Okay? Um, so I've got my uh, time now. Now I'll just plug in my numbers here. The distance is 13 kilometers. Okay? And the time is 0.3838 hours. Okay? If we put that in our calculator. Okay? Velocity for the last part of the trip is 34 kilometers per hour north. How are we feeling about that stuff? That was a tricky one, but in the end, I just was having to manipulate V equals D over T as many times as I could in one question. Okay. That was really all I was looking for you to do there. Okay. All right, I'm gonna have you take maybe about a, I don't know, two or three minute break here. Check your phone, answer all your snaps or whatever. Okay, and then I want to uh, kind of look over question number 10 here. Okay, because we're going to start looking at position versus time graphs tomorrow. Okay, uh, so I want to kind of have a look at this one. Okay, so they, they travel 25 meters per second for 10 minutes, which is 600 seconds. Then they run out of gas, so the driver carrying an empty gasoline can walks at one and a half meters per second for another 600 seconds to the nearest gas station. Can I figure out how far he goes in that time? He walks at one and a half meters per second for 600 seconds. I have distance, or sorry, I have uh, uh, speed and time. Can I figure out how far he goes? Yeah. In other words, I can figure out how far it is from the car to the gas station. Agreed? That's important because when he walks back, he walks slower. 
because he's carrying a full can of gas now instead of an empty can, okay? And it's important that I know how far he has to walk at the slower speed so I can figure out how long it takes him to walk back because it'll be a different amount of time even though it's the same distance, okay? So we're just trying to make you think a little bit. It's gotta be more than just, well, I can manipulate people with D over T. Yes, I know, okay? I'm sure you guys can all do that. This makes you think a little bit more than that, okay? So in part one, Okay, we have um, a speed of 25 meters per second, okay, a time of 600 seconds, okay, and um, a distance there. I don't even think we really need that. We don't even really need the distance for part one. Okay, for part two, right, we know that the speed is 1.5 meters per second, and the time is again 600 seconds. Right? We do need to figure out how far they go in part two. Okay? Um, so we're going to have 1.5 times 600. Well, 1.5 times 600 is 900 meters. Everybody all right with that? Okay, so they travel. It's 900 meters from the car to the gas station. So he was close, ran out of gas. He was, you know, riding the slash. Didn't work out for him. Okay. Um, then in part three, where he's walking back, right, we know that he's traveling at negative 1.2 meters per second. And we know that since he's walking back to the car, the car isn't going to move because it's out of gas, it is 900 meters away in the opposite direction this time. So it's negative. Okay. And then in part four, the car is driven home at negative 25 meters per second. And if it's driven all the way home, it must be driven for the same amount of time as it was to get there. Okay? Everybody all right with that? So all I need to do to be able to draw a velocity versus time graph for this problem is figure out the time for part three. Is this the only thing I don't know? Okay. Time equals d over v, so 900 divided by 1.2. All right, so it takes 750 seconds to walk back to the car. Well, now I can draw my velocity versus time graph. All right, so we'll have positive 25 meters per second, negative 25 meters per second, um, 1.5 meters per second, and 1.2. Those are the only numbers we need on the y-axis. Okay. And then on the x-axis, we're going to need you know, a fair amount of space to get up to our 600 seconds plus 600 is 1,200, 2,100, uh, so 2,700 seconds. Okay, so for the first 600 seconds, the car drives at 25 meters per second. Then, because they run out of gas, and I'm just going to assume that the running out of gas, stopping, getting out, getting their gas can, and everything else happened instantaneously, so I don't have to draw any slashes or slants. Okay. Now he's going to walk for another 600 seconds at one and a half meters per second. Okay. So here's 600, 1,200. I'm also going to assume that the filling of the can, the turning around and going back, is instantaneous. Okay. And now he's going to walk back at negative 1.2 meters per second for 600 seconds. Or sorry, for 750 seconds. So uh, that'll be 1,950 seconds. And then drives back at negative 25 meters per second. There's my graph. Okay. Now once in a while when I have people do this question, I see this happen. They get to this part and they do this. What's wrong with that? Right, you're going back in time. Okay, when you draw a graph like that, you're going backwards negatively in time. Okay, graphs are always going to go forwards in time because, well, we don't know if you can actually do that. We certainly can't. We don't have the technology to go backwards in time. Okay, unless you know something I don't. We have a time machine at home. We can talk. We can get rich. All right. Questions on that stuff there? All right. Tomorrow we will start looking at position versus time graphs. Okay. On Tuesday, after the long weekend, we'll be doing our first lap.
right, on position versus time. Okay, that's what we'll be doing here in the coming days.